everyone, welcome back to Preference Nomad Junior. I'm teacher Athena, and today you're going to learn how to create a timer in Scratch. When you click the green flag, you can type something inside. So let's try 0 minute and 5 seconds. And then press the space key and start. So you will see the timer is counting down. And once 00 is reached, there will be a banner over here. Now let's try to enter 3 minutes and 3 seconds and you will see that it is counting down accordingly. So now let's start and code for this project. Let's get started. First, we have to create a world for our timer projects. So you can delete the cat sprite and if you would like to add backdrops, you can add it from the library or import a photo from a computer. Next, we are going to add a timer sprite. I've already downloaded the photos into our computer, so I will just go and upload my sprite. You can go online and search for the PNG photos. You can use the flaticon.com or go to Google. Next, we are going to add a box in our project. I've already drawn a box in Scratch. You can simply use this square function to draw the box and then use this circle function to draw the dots over here. And then you can choose the color over here. Alright, next we are going to add the third sprite, which is a banner. So you go to paint and you are going to type something over here as a banner. And in the project, I'm going to type timer is done. You can choose the color over here to make it visible. And you can choose what type of words you want it to be. For this banner, there will be two um, costumes. So for the first one, it will be in the middle. And for the second one, we are going to add a costume for it. You can simply duplicate this costume one and then drag this to a different position so that later on when it changed costume, it will look like it is moving. Before we start adding codes into our sprite, first let us position our sprite into appropriate position so that they won't overlap each other. Alright, then we can start coding. First, we have to add some codes inside the backdrops. So let's go to backdrops. When the game starts by clicking the green flag, the backdrops will ask few questions and the user have to type something inside. Before adding these blocks, let's go to variables and make a variable for our project first. There are two variables in this project. The first is the minute. You can type the short form of minute and OK. Next, we are going to add second. So we have created two variables over here. Okay, so now let's get started. First, drag a green flag button. And we would like the backdrop to ask questions when the game starts. So go to sensing and add ask what's your name and wait. Change it into how many minutes. Next, we have to go to variables and find a block called set minute to zero, put it underneath. When the user types something inside, 
we would like the computer to get the answer. So over here, we are not going to use zero. We would like to go to sensing and add a block called answer. So whatever the user type, it will be saved into this answer block and show it up in the game. So next, we are going to ask the second question. How many seconds? And then same thing, we have to go and get a set minute to zero, but this time change it to second. And we need an answer block over here. So the computer will get the answer of what the player just typed. Next, underneath here, we would like to add a broadcast block. We would like this backdrop to send out a message to another sprite. So let's go to the event and find a block called broadcast message one and drag it underneath here. We can give a name for this message. We can type start timer and OK. We would like the variables minute and second to be displayed on the box in our project. So we can simply drag these two blocks into our box. And you can right click it and change it to the large readout. And it will look like this. Okay, next, we have to add codes for our timer. So let's go inside. The backdrop has already sent out a message called start timer. So in the timer, we have to receive the message. So go to events and find a block called when I receive start timer. And underneath, we would like the timer to say something. So go to looks block and find say hello for two seconds. Over here, you can type anything you want. You can type press space key to start. Okay, so have, let's have a look. So you can try to type in something. For example, I type one minute and two seconds. So you can see that the one minute and two seconds are displayed on the variables box. And just now, the timer will say something for two seconds. If you find it too short, you can change the value over here. The timer will start counting when you press the space key. Let's have a look on how timer works. Over here, we have two minutes and four seconds. When the timer starts counting, you will see the second is changed by negative one. And when zero zero is reached, it will count from 59 seconds again. And for the minute part, it will change by negative one. So first, let's go to events and we have to drag one space key pressed. Because the action will repeat forever, so we need a forever loop. Next, we have to add wait one second. Every one second is passed, we want our variables to change by negative one as well. So find change minute by one, remember to change it to second and the value will be negative one. Okay, next, we need to add an event block. So drag an event block and put it inside. There is a condition over here. If the second is smaller than zero, so we go to operators and find a smaller than block, put it inside, and drag second, change it to zero. The reason to add this condition is because we want the timer to count zero as well. 
we do not want it to omit counting zero. And then inside the then part, we will add set second to 59. Because every time when the timer reaches zero, 00, it will start counting from 59 seconds. And for the minutes, it will change by negative one. So let's have a look. This time we will enter one minute and three seconds. You will see once it's reached zero, 00, it will change to 59 seconds and continue to count down. And for the minute part, it will go from one to zero. Okay, so how about counting for five seconds? You will see that once it reached zero, zero, something is wrong. It starts all over from 59 seconds, and for the minute part, it will become negative one. But in reality, it is impossible. So what are missing? We need to add some more block over here to tell the timer that when 00, zero is reached, then it has to be stopped. So following, you're, we are going to add some more codes. So let's put these two blocks aside. We'll use it later. Inside the if then block, we have to add a if then else block. And for this block, we need to add a condition. This time we have to consider when, if the minute equal to zero. So we have to first add a equal block and inside you will need minute equal to zero. So if the second is smaller than zero, and also if the minute is equal to zero, then we have to stop our game because the timer will stop when it reaches zero, zero. So we need to find a block called stop all and put it here. And now we can have a look. We can type three seconds. You will see when it reached zero, zero, you can see that for a minute part, it does not change to the negative one. However, for your seconds part, you will see that it changed to negative one. Why does it happen? This is because over here, you can see that we have a condition that if second is smaller than zero, which means that it will count the zero as well. Therefore, over here, if we do not want it to count the zero and just stop at zero, zero, we need to add an extra block, which is go to variable and set the second to zero so that it will not count do the countdown furthermore after it reached zero. So now let's have a look. After adding the set second to zero, we will try three seconds again. Now, all good, it, doesn't, it didn't go to negative one after adding the set second to zero. Okay, so what if the minute is not equal to zero? For example, if it is one minute, two seconds, so we need to add these two blocks over here so that if it is really one minute and two seconds, for a minute part, it will change minute by negative one and continue to count down from 59 seconds. So now we can try to put one minute and three seconds over here. And when you start, you will see it do the countdown all over from 59 seconds. And for the minute part, it will change by negative one. All right, so now let's go to your banner and add some code for it. This banner will hide when the green flag is clicked and it will show when timer reaches zero, zero. So first of all, let's drag a when green flag clicked button and then we need it to hide. 
and then we want the banner to wait until the minute equal to zero and the second equal to zero then it will show so today you're going to learn a new block called wait until you can go to control and find the block here so inside the wait until block you are going to add and end block inside. So go to operators and you can find this block. So there are two conditions. For these two conditions, we need a equal sign like this. So the condition are the minute equal to zero and the second equal to zero. So this wait until block will process the script inside until a condition is true. So in this case, minute, minute equal to zero and second equal to zero are the conditions. So if the conditions are true, then the banner will show. And it will change its costume. So let's go and get a repeat block and change the next costume every 0 0.1 second. So let's have a look now. So when you click the brain flag, you can type how many minutes you want. I'll type zero and maybe we will try four seconds. So press the space and start. You will see the banner is hiding right now. And it will show when the timer reaches 0, 0. If you think that the time, this banner is too large, you can go to costume and change the size of it or you can position it into a right place. If you do not want the variables to show at the beginning of your project, you can add few blocks in the backdrop. So you can ask it to hide. You can go to variables and find hide variables and put it on the top over here. So you will ask it to hide variable minute and hide variable second. So when the timer is pressed, it will show the variables. So let's go back to your timer and add the show variables on top of the forever loop. So now let's have a look. Press the green flag and try it out. So you will see that when you're typing, the variables are hiding. And now when you press the space key, the variables are showing. So now you have completed your timer project in Scratch. Let's do a little recap on what you have learned today. Today you have learned a block called wait until. You can find this block in the control part. This block helps you to pause the script inside until a condition is true and then it will run. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get our daily contents. I'm teacher Athena and this is Preface Nomad Junior.